Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tuba, and uh, on this third Sunday, we read from the third chapter of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. And basically, the theme of this chapter is the same as the theme of most of this month, including what follows after the month, um, which is the Great Lent, which is what? Mm -hmm. So John chapter 3 is to baptism, as John chapter 6 is to communion, right? And um, since we celebrated the Epiphany Feast um, just recently, um, the, last, the last two weeks um, of the month focus primarily on the baptism and the concept of baptism, as does the Great Lent. Um, <clears throat> and so um, we read from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 3 today from verse 22, but we actually started the chapter in Matins. Typically in Matins, um, we read what, which gospel? Nine or so months out of the year. In Matins, we read of the gospel of the resurrection. Um, <clears throat> but during the time, um, during this time after uh, the blessed month of the tour, so when we start Kiak, the gospels in the Matins are not pertaining typically to the resurrection, and we say J'at Iyat instead of J'at Tonkat, if you notice. Um, <clears throat> and so the, that's why the church selected the beginning of the chapter um, in this morning where the Lord speaks with Nicodemus about the concept of baptism. Um, <clears throat> so here, that's why today it's, it starts by saying, after these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Um, and so uh, he remained with them. And I think that's an important concept for us to realize that before baptism, this is an important for us to focus on. After baptism, we recall it and remember and we try to spend our time with the Lord. Um, and they came to St. John the Baptist and said to him, He um, who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified. And some of the fathers say, notice they didn't say to whom you baptized. They said, whom you testified to. Um, the Lamb of God who carries over the sin of the world. Behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. So they were getting a little frustrated and probably jealous. And they wanted to instigate probably that concept in John the Baptist but he corrected them. Um, <clears throat> so people may often say some things to us, whether intentionally or unintentionally, to make us jealous of others or envious. Um, and this appeals to our ego and our pride, but, um, but we have to look at things in a different way, in the proper way. Um, <clears throat> some define envy over something uh, as something that, you don't have what you want. And other people um, continue by explaining jealousy as something that you already have that you don't want to lose, right? Either way, um, this is the concept uh, relating to the sin of, of covetousness. <clears throat> but um, in order to prevent ourselves from going down this road in our thoughts and in our heart, number one, we have to look to God. We have to give him everything that we have or that he has already given us um, and focus on his beneficence and his grace and his goodness. Um, and as St. Cyril says, uh, with whatever God shall please to honor us, value that highly. Right? <clears throat> and so maybe this is why um, the church starts with the verse of the gospel today, that he remained with them. So we say, well, Lord, whatever happens, stay with me. Uh, remain with me. Let, let me feel your presence. Just like the two disciples on the, on the road to Emmaus, their hearts burned within them, and they... He, he acted as if he was going to continue on, and they grabbed him to know, stay with us, remain with us. Um, that's all I need. It's, it's similar to the, the mistake of both the prodigal son and his brother, right, in the parable in Luke chapter 15. <clears throat> what was their problem? They were focusing on the gift and not the giver, and they didn't realize what they had until they did certain things um, um, along that path, um, and they needed to be corrected. So what did the father tell the brother at the end? 
um, <clears throat> he said, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. This was his problem. Even though he was always in the house and he was doing his father's will outwardly, but inside he was not happy. And, and, and he was, maybe he didn't complain when his brother left, but he complained when he returned and got the things that he had his eye on. And so um, God is telling each one of us today, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. And when we have that feeling, then we look at things differently in, in the world because our, our mind is occupied with the heavenly, not the earth. <clears throat> and that's why he, he tells him later, it was right and proper that we made merry and, and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found. <clears throat> so we have to focus on the good that comes out. St. John the Baptist had his eye on the proper things. That's why it didn't faze him. And actually, he said, this joy of mine has been fulfilled. Like, you, you're bringing me this news and it's supposed to make me upset? No, it's actually making me more joyful because this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. He must increase and I must decrease. Um, same thing happened with um, Joseph the righteous, right? God allowed him to be in bondage, um, to free and to heal and to feed the people of the entire world at the time. It took him years and years um, to see God's divine plan unfolding, but he was wise not to judge or hold a grudge against his brothers. <clears throat> so, even though St. Paul had not said it yet or written it yet, but keeping in mind the verse, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. <clears throat> so um, same thing, with the, or the opposite can be said of King Saul. Right? He should have thanked God for for delivering him and all of the Israelites from the hand of their enemies, rather than to be angry um, at David when, when the people started to rejoice um, <clears throat> that God gave them victory. Um, said Saul has slain his thousands and David has ten thousands. So who cares? <laughs> at least God is uh, giving us the victory. It doesn't matter how much. When we don't compare ourselves with each other. We, we see the glory and the power of God that he has given to us. So it's all about the way we, we perceive um, God in our life. <clears throat> um, so so uh, the second point is that um, we need to understand who we are and where we fit in to God's plan. If our focus is on God's plan, then we need to understand how we fit into the picture. That's why John the Baptist said, and in verse 28, you yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ. I know I'm not the Christ, um, but I have been sent before him. And then he says, he who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom rejoices. Um, and he stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. I'm focusing on listening to the bridegroom's voice. I, I, and I know he deserves the bride. And I'm not jealous. <laughs> I'm happy for him. He's my, he's my um, beloved. Right? <clears throat> um, so that's why he said, therefore, my joy, the joy of mine is fulfilled. So we have to acknowledge our, our feelings and our thoughts that are not aligning with God's will, um, whether it be envy or jealousy or anger or bitterness or anything like that. Um, but we realize that the grace of God that has been delivered to us is undeserved. Um, <clears throat> so um, then we need to look within ourselves. Um, which unfortunately Cain himself didn't, right? He, he saw that his, his brother's sacrifice was accepted, but his was not, right? And instead of correcting himself, and God saw this and knew this and knew what was, he was intending to do. And so what did God tell Cain before he, he committed sin after sin? It said um, in, in Genesis chapter 4, he says, um, Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? So he's trying to tell him, you did something wrong, correct yourself and then you'll get rewarded. Don't focus on, on, on the reward that you don't deserve. Um, focus on the act that you need to do. Um, <clears throat> and he says, uh, if you do not do well, then sin lies at the door. But if you do well, you will get the blessing. So sometimes we get upset at God or, or others for having things that we think we deserve. It doesn't, doesn't matter about that, but look at yourself and see what you're doing wrong. Um, and if you can't find anything 
that you're doing wrong, ask God to reveal to yourself because none of us is sinless. Um, <clears throat> and like we've said before, even if you don't see a relationship between your sin and, and what you think you deserve, just count it according to any sin that you have. It doesn't matter if, it, matter if it's related or not. Um, <clears throat> so this is the idea of he must increase and I must decrease. Um, this can pertain to a lot of different things in our life. Um, one has to do with the past and the present. Oftentimes, when we look at our past, um, we remember the good things and and assume that in the future we deserve uh, we deserve good things. Or, for example, um, we use the past to humble ourselves, and we use the hope of the future to trust in God's grace, right? Um, oftentimes, when we look at the past, we remember God's grace, and we look in the future, we're in despair of our weakness. So we should remember our weakness when we remember the past, and we remember God's strength when we look towards the future. Um, oftentimes, we do the opposite. <clears throat> And so we become proud of thinking about the past and we lose hope when we think about the future. But in a sense, we should be humble when we think about the past and, and our humble beginnings. Um, and we, we trust in God's grace and his strength when we look at um, our, our future life. Um, and this is kind of what King Saul did uh, in, in the right direction in the very beginning of his kingship. Um, he did this, right? When, when they were calling him to become um, uh, or when Samuel the prophet came to, to anoint him and to announce to him that he would be the king, of, the first king of Israel, he said, am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family the least of all families of the tribe of Benjamin? He's like, I'm, I'm the, the smallest among the small. Who am I to become king? Of course, this is not how he ended, um, but he had the proper beginning. He didn't have the proper end. Um, and so um, we have to take care that we don't fall into the same trap. Um, so there is a benefit to being weak or to having uh, a weak past. Um, because like St. Paul says in the Corinthians, he says, um, uh, when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak and remembering my own personal weakness, I seek and supplicate the grace of God, which gives me strength. Um, because God says, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is enough for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when we remember our weakness, then we depend on his strength and not vice versa. <clears throat> um, and that's the whole concept of he must increase, but I must decrease. Um, as St. John Chrysostom says, the more you understand God, right? Um, he, the more he grows in you, or he seems to be growing in you. Um, even though God... God does not grow, does not, God does not become perfect. He is everything, and he is strong. But inside of us, that's where the difference lies. Um, <clears throat> so another way we can understand this concept um, of he must increase, I must decrease, has to do with the humility and the repentance and the confession that we offer, and then the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness that God offers, um, and to compare these two. Um, so... Uh, St. Augustine kind of describes this also when he, he expounds on this verse. Um, and he said, this is a great mystery. He said, what, is, what does this verse mean? He must increase, but I must decrease. He says, before Christ came, men were glorifying themselves. He came as a man to lessen man's glory, to increase the glory of God. He says, now he came without sin and found all men in sin. And then and he says, for man's confession is man's lowliness. When we repent and confess, and sit at the feet of the Lord, we recognize our lowliness, right? God's mercy is his, his greatness. Um, and, and the forgiveness that he announces to us, that shows the greatness and the mercy of God. Um, <clears throat> so he came to forgive, to forgive man his sins, as St. Augustine says, let man acknowledge his own lowliness and let God show his mercy. Um, that's what St. Augustine explains this first week. <clears throat> it says, God, Christ must give, but I must receive. He must be glorified, but I must confess. Let man know his condition and confess to God. Um, let him decrease in himself that he may be increased in God. So we decrease in our personal self, but
but we still increase as well because God is giving us grace and power and strength and forgiveness and mercy. Um, and this is what we use to sustain ourselves um, in this world. <clears throat> so then I need to ask myself, well, how much of, of, of my life or of my thoughts or of my time is dedicated to me and how much to God? Um, I think for all of us, when we look, it's no comparison. And so our goal in life is, is to make a more proper balance. Um, and there's always room for improvement. Um, <clears throat> and so when we go through our life, well, okay, I need to de decrease a little bit in this and give a little more to God in this um, because he has given me everything. Um, and this is how we grow in grace. Um, <clears throat> so uh, finally we conclude with what uh, St. John the Baptist also said he said a man can receive nothing uh, and here's the grace again unless it has been given to him from heaven so and, uh, similar to what Job said right naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return there the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord right? so we realize our beginnings like we were saying before and that helps humble us and put us in our place and realize our weakness. But then when we realize how, how undeserving we are of the grace and realize how great the gift is, then it actually brings us closer to God, not further. Um, and, and so um, as uh, St. John Chrysostom says, don't be surprised that he seems to speak um, somewhat humbly of Christ. Um, especially when you consider that it was not appropriate to tell the whole truth to minds pre-possessed with such a passion as envy. He said he only tries to present, uh, to alarm them by showing them that they are making war against none other than God himself. Um, <clears throat> so we war against God and we envy and, and, and things like this and get jealous because we believe that he has treated us wrongly or unfairly. Um, and, and then we haven't looked to, to the, the beneficence of God or the, 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 the greatness of his beauty and his love and his compassion, but we're focusing on the physical things like the brother of the, the prodigal son. Um, so, but when we realize, like what St. Cyril uses the verse, you know, one star differ, differs from another in glory. Everyone is different. Everyone is like um, in the Song of Songs, um, God sees us as a beautiful garden, and each one of us is beautiful in God's eyes in a different way. Um, everyone has been created different in the image and likeness of God, and God is so great that his image and likeness can vary from person to person, just like the stars are great, just like the snowflakes are great, but each one is unique. And so our goal is not to imitate others except for Christ um, and see the grace of God that is in us and work with it and allow it to increase so that the beauty may increase, even though it's not like uh, so-and-so. And so when someone else is growing in grace and in glory, we should rejoice, um, but not expect that we deserve to be the same uh, in, in that character and nature of the other, but we have to look within ourselves to see what the grace that is inside of us and to like I said, um, stir up the grace of God that is in you, like St. Paul says. Um, <clears throat> so may the Lord give us the grace of God and, and to recognize it more and more so that we put ourselves in our place um, and then see the grace of God that works in us finally. And glory be to him now and to the each other. Just... <laughs> Sabet, <laughs> <laughs>